I've chosen the book The Pig in a Wig, written by Alan McDonald and illustrated by Paul Hess. Once there were some animals who lived on a farm in a humble, tumble-down barn. One of them was a pig called Pagodi. Pagodi was a polite, kind-hearted pig, but she was rather proud of her looks, and she spent hours admiring her reflection in the duck pond. She believed herself to be the prettiest, pinkest, most perfect pig in all the world. One morning, some lambs passed by the farmyard gate on their way to the fields. Pagodi was gazing at herself in the duck pond as usual. The lambs were very pleasant with their new woolly coats and hadn't yet learned any manners. They stopped to stare at her. Ugly old pig, you're pink and fat and you're bald too, they bleated. The lamb skipped off giggling, leaving Pagodi to gaze at her reflection again. Instead of the prettiest, pinkest, most perfect pig, she now saw an awfully ugly bald pig. A tear, a tear trickled down her snout and plopped into the duck pond. Why had she been born bald? She wondered. There must have been some mistake. She dried her eyes and decided to ask some of her barnyard friends. She found the horse, the old horse, munching hay in the barn. Excuse me, said Pagodi, most politely, but could you tell me why I'm bald? Bald? Oh yes, the old horse said, clearing his throat. The reason why you're bald is that you have no mane, he replied. And please asked Pagodi. Is that what makes me so awfully ugly? Why, of course, nickered the cow, or nickered the horse. There is no finer thing in all the world than a glossy and galloping mane. I see, said Pagodi. Thank you. Pagodi trotted into the barnyard where she spotted the marmalade cat curled up in a sunny spot. Excuse me, said Pagodi most politely. But do you know why I am bald? The marmalade cat opened one eye and looked at Pagodi. The reason why you're bald is that you're wearing no fur, she replied. Pagodi nodded sadly. sadly. And is that what makes me so awfully ugly? Of course, purred the cat. There is no finer thing in the world than lip lickable, tickable fur. I see, said Pagodi. Thank you. For the rest of that day, Pagodi hid herself from the other animals. It was after dark when she returned to the humble, tumble-down barn. Only the moon was out. Oh, luminous moon, said Pagodi. Why was I born so bald and awfully ugly? To her great surprise, a voice replied, The reason why you're bald is that you have no fabulous feathers to flaunt. Pagodi looked up. It wasn't the moon talking after all. It was a singing cock on the roof. Can you help me? asked Pagodi, most politely. I've asked everyone why I'm bald and awfully ugly, and they say it's because I haven't got a glossy and galloping mane or lickable, tickable fur, not to mention fabulous feathers to flaunt, but I don't see what I can do about it. The cock struck back and forth on the crest of the roof. It would indeed be a strange and wonderful sight if a pig could grow feathers, the cock crowed. Suddenly, Pagodi had an idea. Without thanking the singing cock or bidding it good night, she trotted into the barn. All that night, while the other animals slept, strange rustling and scuffling sounds came from Pagodi's corner. When the first sunlight crept into the barn, the cock crowed and the animals stretched and yawned and shuffled out into the yard. Everyone stared at Pagodi. Overnight, she had grown hair, golden locks of hair, as curly as a pig's tail. Pagodi tossed her head proudly and paraded in front of them. Just then, the young lambs passed by the gate following their mothers up to the field. Look at that pig, shouted one. What she got on her head? The pig is wearing a wig, they cried. They all crowded around the gate, bleeding and giggling at poor Pagodi. The pig in a wig, the pig in a wig, they chorused. Pagodi's pink face turned red. She spun around and fled up the hill. She didn't stop running until she reached the big farmhouse at the top. There she crept into the shadow of the wall and wept. Tears ran down her plump cheeks and the straw wig lay crooked and crumpled on her head. Wah! Wah! A voice wailed nearby. Pagodi sniffled and listened. It was coming from the farmhouse. Hush, hush, my darling. Don't cry, my precious, another voice sang. Standing on her high legs, 
hind legs, Pagodi could just see into the window. The farmer's wife sat on the floor, washing something in a tub. In the tub of water lay a baby human. Its eyes were screwed up tight, and its two tiny hands waved in the air. It was as pink as Pagodi. But what surprised her most was this. The baby was completely bald. It was a pink, plump, and perfectly hairless human. The farmer's wife tickled the baby's round tummy. You're beautiful, my beautiful angel, she cooed. The baby began to gurgle and giggle. Pagodi pressed her face against the glass, smiling back. At that moment, the farmer's wife looked up and saw the bedraggled, bewiggled face at the window. Help, she cried, a horrible, hairy monster. Pagodi fell over backwards with a fright. The crooked and crumpled wig fell off. She left it in the mud and galloped through the gate and back down the hill. That night, Pagodi told her story to the other animals in the humble, tumble-down barn. And so she concluded, if you are hairy, humans think you are a horrible monster. But if you are bald, and here she blushed modestly, they call you an angel. And they say you are beautiful, she added, holding her head up a little higher. Pagodi has never worn a wig since that day, and she doesn't believe that the finest thing in all the world is a glossy and galloping mane, or tickable, lickable fur, or fabulous feathers to flaunt. She thinks pigs are just born perfect. I think students would really like this book, especially in a third grade classroom that I've been working in. Um, I think the pictures are realistic enough where they could relate them to actual animals, but they're colorful so they could, I don't know, be interested in the pages. Um, the author changes the structure of it, so sometimes the text is up here. Um, sometimes it's like cut in the middle, so there's a little space in between it. Um, and then in a few of these pages, um, the author chose to do smaller pictures like the circle and a full page picture. So it kind of changes the uh, structure of the book or the format of it. Um, I think the theme of this book is just to love who you are and not pay attention to other people. Um, and I think this would really hit home with some students because of bullying and in schools and knowing that you are beautiful as a student and no one can change the way you feel about yourself if you're confident. Um, so I really think they would enjoy this book and I think it has enough maybe tougher vocabulary words to be able to talk about them in class while easy enough for the students to be able to understand. So I really enjoyed this book and I hope you all did too.